Hello fellow figure skating fans and friends. Today Kanishi and I are making a video. I'm calling this series Figure Skating Discussions. It's where I just want to talk about uh, different pieces of news or updates to the figure skating season as it happens in the off season and we're getting a lot of information. And I won't cover everything, just the topics that I feel like discussing with my friends. And today, Kanishka, we are talking about your favorite Canadian skater, Caitlin Osmond. And we are making this video because Skate Canada just announced in a press release about two weeks ago, I'm a little late to this, that she has decided not to continue competing in the Grand Prix season. We'll take some time off to consider future options for her career and also to do some tours. So I just wanted to start off by talking about her season as a whole, because obviously it ended on a big high, but not everyone was expecting it based on how uh, the earlier parts of her season went. We'll talk about the Grand Prix. Um, she won Skate Canada, did not skate perfectly there, and big shocker, she kind of, not kind of, she lost to a uh, fellow country uh, competitor, Gabrielle Dalman at Canadian National. So it's so interesting to hear that a Canadian lady won Worlds, but lost Canadian Nationals. <laughs> What's your take on her entire season? It was a world win of a year for Caitlin Osmond. The start of the season did not look great. And I think even she was wondering, like, why was she making mistakes? Because her training was going so well. And then Canadian Nationals was probably like a shock to her. And then the team event where she competed in the short program was probably another shock to her. But then for some reason, miraculously, she was able to deliver a very strong free skate at the Olympics to win that bronze medal. And then again, like she made mistakes in that short program at the World in Milan just to make a comeback in the free skate. And with mistakes by Zagitova of Russia, Kostner of Italy among other great athletes. that I just want to put that out there. Great athletes. She was able to win that gold medal. And as a Caitlin Osmond fan, I was very proud of her. Just because for so long in her career, people have been like either putting her on a different pedestal and saying like she's the next great thing or just saying, look how wildly inconsistent she is. Like she does not deserve the mark she's getting. So she was able to prove to both of them, the supporters and the haters, that she belonged. And yeah, I was ecstatic when I found out that she won the world championships. Yeah, and I don't think she was competing to prove other people wrong. I think she was just kind of doing her thing, which she, Caitlin's actually really great about, like not really letting outside factors, you know, affect her training and competitions. But yeah, we've heard it probably every season since she's been competing as a senior that she's wildly inconsistent. What I have been known to say about Caitlin in the past is that she's really good at skating a short program. Usually we can expect mistakes in the long. Still, she tends to win the competitions, even when that happens. But it was nice to great. It was so nice to see her be able to put together two really clean programs at, I'd say, one of the biggest competitions of the year. I know the Olympics is officially the big, biggest competition, but Worlds you know, was a big deal as well, especially since the reigning Olympic champion, um, Alina Zagitova from Russia, was competing. And Karolina Kostner was also there in her home country. So those were some big expectations for some other skaters. And Caitlin prevailed at Worlds. But oh, I'm just so happy for her. Let's talk about the Olympics first. Two great accomplishments, two great medals, a team gold and an individual bronze. What a big deal. First of all, congratulations to Canada, you know? Like, I think they prioritized the team event over the singles event. At least that's what they said in the press conference, right? Mm -hmm. And um, for them to capture that gold medal, probably was like they were on cloud nine, you know? I know that Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford, that was a great um, swan song for them. Um, same thing. Patrick Chan. Patrick Chan, and even Gabby and Caitlin were probably very elated to get that um, long-awaited gold medal that they dreamed of, even if it was in the team event. And of yeah. course, that's virtue and Scott Moyer as well. So Yeah, and you know, it doesn't really matter. When you look at the medals close up, it does not say team competition, exactly. individual event. It is Olympic gold medal. So kudos to the entire Canadian team. Caitlin definitely played a huge part despite the short program not being perfect, 
but she did help secure Canada the gold medal. And then the individual competition, you know what? I think Caitlin was in the battle for the bronze medal, and she won that battle. Definitely, yeah. I think even going into the Olympics, they knew that the battle was going to be between the two Russians, Alina Zagidova and Evgenia Medvedeva. And I think everyone was putting Kaylin Osman as a like a favorite for the bronze medal, but there are still like a lot of competitors like the Costners of Italy that could have been in that hunt for that medal as well. But she definitely earned it with that um, great free skate that she had. And just to like praise Kaylin just a tad more, sure. like I feel, yeah, I feel like her jumps and her spins as well. Like they're a lot more immaculate than those of the Russians. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I prefer, I kind of like compare the girls to the women on mm -hmm. the ice. And Kaylin just this, has this like more women power to her. Her jumps are a lot bigger. They cover more ice than a Zagitova and a Medvedeva. And I think that the new rules that are coming on for this coming season, Justin, where it's going to be between like the plus one to plus five, minus one to minus five, mm -hmm would play in favor of Caitlin Osmond. So that's why I was kind of surprised when I first um, heard that she was going to skip the Grand Prix. But at the same time, I think that Canada will probably say something to her and be like, we need you to come back because there's another rule that was changed where <laughs> now, it, even if Gabby and Caitlin were to win medals or like how like the 13 total, you know, to get three spots, if another skater, like, for example, let's take Larkin Osman, does not qualify for that free skate, then Canada loses that third spot just because one did not qualify for the free skate, which kind of hurts their chances, because Gabby, she's consistent, and she can probably plays in the top ten, but who's after that? Like, Elaine Chartrand, Larkin Osman, or Tamura, um... I know you like Aurora Kortop. So like Aurora Kortop. Yeah. What happens <laughs> if they don't qualify for that free skate then like it's like they just lose a spot. That's um, right. By the way, I like that rule by the way. And so this is a perfect segue into the next topic of discussion I wanted to talk yeah. about. Um and that we're kind of moving around, but yeah, this is fine. fine. Um about <sighs> how much Canada will miss Caitlin being out there competing. And we got to say, Canada has some of the like top ladies in the world, or two top ladies in the world, Caitlin Osman, Gabby Delman, both were on the world podium at 2017 Worlds. The problem is, is that there's a big drop yeah. <laughs> after that nationally in Canada. They don't have the depth, whereas the, the top skaters that are out there competing really can contend for world titles. I feel like Canada has the opposite problem that the U.S. has. Because if you look at the U.S. nationals for ladies, placements, you know, one down to eight are usually good enough, any of them, as long as they're consistent, to go to the world championships and, you know, not be a complete embarrassment. But Canada, you know, the third person who goes to world for the ladies is really lucky to get that spot. Or the second, if they only have yeah, two spots. that's right. right so yeah. um, you, we were talking about this one time. So you think that it's possible that Caitlin could come back just for nationals, so compete for the second half of the season? Yeah, I think so. It all depends on how the Grand Prix season goes. Because right now we know that Gabby Daleman will definitely receive two Grand Prix. She'll definitely probably get Skate Canada now that Caitlin's skipping the Grand Prix. Uh, and then we'll have to just kind of like see how Elaine does and the other skaters that they may want to send to an international event. Um, but it's kind of scary not having Kaylin Osmond on the scene because we knew that Kaylin Osmond will at least be able to deliver somewhat where she'll be able to be in the hunt for medals. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's it's nerve-wracking to think about Canadian field going yeah. forward. I feel like a lot of countries go through this cycle, though. Like, 
Russia was kind of not at their highest point in ladies figure skating for 20, before 2014 Sochi. They only had two spots. True. And then America was once on top, and now we're not exactly. And Canada was on top for a while. No one expected that. And so, yeah, it's just the wave is moving, and I think it's actually going to go towards Japan now. I think so, too. Satoga Miyahara, uh, oh gosh, Wakaba Higuchi being the reigning world silver medalist. Amazing. But yeah, so I so I don't think Caitlin will come back for nationals, although I think it'd be good for her too. I just I don't see it happening. Um, so Elaine Chartron is gonna have to step up her game. And then some of the youngsters are gonna have to see like the three teammates that went to the Olympics be inspired and want to compete with them. So I know, you know, Sarah Tamura has a triple triple combination aurora kotop is capable of doing triple triples bring your big jumps at canadian nationals and maybe you can make an impression at the world figure skating championships but they desperately need a lots or a flip just saying yeah so larkin needs to work on one sarah tomorrow has a let's which is cool but it's not the most consistent no, no it's her. not so caitlin you will be missed but i expect gabby to carry on with the Canadian champion crown very beautifully for the next year or two. See, I expect Caitlin to come back for the, like, she's going to do like a Yuna Kim, you know? She's going to skip the Grand Prix, come back for nationals, make it to the world team, and maybe capture like a silver medal at world. But then now Evgenia is still continuing, so um, maybe I'm, a bronze medal. I'm not Who sure knows? it's going to be that easy for Caitlin. I can imagine if she came back, winning Canadian nationals won't be you know, uh, confirmed. And then, you know, I think she'll make the world team, but, you know, a top 10 placement is not guaranteed if she took the Grand Prix season off. We'll just have to see. But if anyone can do it, <laughs> I think it's Caitlin Oz. That is true. Okay, so let's move on to another part of the video I wanted to discuss. As you know, I was not able to make a world's recap video because the season was just so long with the Olympics. I was, I was burnt out pretty early on, right after the Olympics. So let's take this time to just recap Caitlin Osmond's performances at World. And I got to say, I think it's so amazing that Caitlin skated first in that free skate group and still won the title. Like, you don't always hear about that, especially when there's six people in the group, especially when you're competing against Carolina Costner in Italy and then Alina Zagidova. Like, no one expected, by the way, those two mistake-ridden performances from those two top ladies. So maybe a little bit of luck on Caitlin's side, but she also skated so well. The only mistake I remember seeing was a step out on the double axle, triple toe combination. Yep. Now, otherwise, yep. her jumps were like really more secure than I've seen in the past. She had amazing speed, great ice coverage, as you said earlier, and she just embodies a mature woman on the ice. So I can understand how the judges gave her really good program component marks. Definitely. Definitely. I think that it shows how well-trained Caitlin Osman is, because I think that when she makes mistakes, people think, oh, is she training enough? Is she injured? What, Whatever. Like, they always make a point to, like, call her out on it when she's not consistent. So the fact that she was able to be the first one to skate out of that group and pretty much nail it for the most part, is quite the accomplishment. And that's why I have faith that even if she was to take some time off, as long as she's continuing to train here and there with her coach Ravi, who's like a great technician, she should be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but back to the world championships, I guess that's what we were discussing. Yeah. Um, I was not expecting her to win. Uh, like even with that clean, pretty much clean free skate, yeah. I thought that there were still like, a window opening for Zagidova, and then when Zagidova made a miss, like all those mistakes, I was like, "Well, there's still a window open for Costner because when you skate in in your home country and leading after the short program, I have to give by a large up, margin. By a large margin, I have to give Carolina props on that. Um, I thought, okay, Carolina can skate conservatively and still win that title." But then the mistakes just kept happening and happening. And I was like, and then I think I was messaging you, Justin. And I was like, yeah. I think Caitlin could win this thing. Um, and then, yeah, when she won, I was just like static. So as you can tell, 
you can probably hear the sirens going off. There was a very <laughs> announcement as well. So, and I gotta say, I was not the biggest fan of her um, what is it, Swan Lake, Swan Lake Black Swan program. Black Swan program, but it grew on me. But I will say, it took until the Olympics for me to feel it. Um, I think maybe having the mistakes um, early on kind of ruined the program for me. Um, also, I know she did some rearrangement towards the ending of the program, and I think that worked out. Uh, well in her favor but yeah I think when she's commanding in that program like she was in the latter half of the season it works really well it kind of wasn't doing her any favors in my opinion in the beginning of the season when she was working out the kinks yeah like choreographically I think it could have been even better like because I talked with my our, our mutual friend Matthew Rusk a lot and he's a ballet dancer so he's been like educating me on the story of Swan Lake and uh, that makes me question everyone's skating because it's like it's such a big story, you know. And um, it's not a beautiful story. <laughs> it's not a beautiful story by yeah. any means. So um, yeah, so it's always now fascinating to like look back at different Swan Lakes over the years, including Caitlin's, and be like, what part of the story are they trying to tell? So choreographically, I felt like it was somewhat empty, but. Yeah. For Kaylin Osman, like the name of the game is to land those big jumps, and yeah. she already has beautiful spins. So, yeah, choreographically uh, speaking, she could have taken it further. I know some other skaters have a very, very dark approach, and that wasn't Kaylin's. Um, I just also wanted to mention something else. What I'm going to miss about Kaylin is her spins. I don't think enough people talk yeah. about them. They're so good. I think she gets overshadowed by the Russians with you know their. <laughs> Crazy back positions and leg positions, but Caitlin has like, I don't know, like grade A level spins, like centering positions. Uh, it's all really good. She can tend to fall out of them sometimes, like back in her old days Ooh. when. 2015 State <laughs> yeah. Canada, yeah. I remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's had some Anna Pogorelia moments in her days, but uh, such a good season for her. I wish her the best. And. What a perfect time to announce taking a break. She hasn't said the R word, which is retirement yet, but I feel like it could be coming soon. <laughs> I hope not. I, I'm going to miss her skating. You got to admit, though, if she wants to say the R word soon, why not end on a high note? Exactly. Like, even if she does decide to hang up her skates or just retire from competitive skating, she's had quite the um, career. And to cap it off with a world title, I think that. Whether she retires or not, that's a complete career, you know? Yeah. And she can see that she has an Olympic gold, silver, and bronze. A bronze and, yeah, she has, like, everything. So there you go. That's right. And you know what? Um, we'll talk about Gabby Dalman, my favorite. I don't think Gabby would be as great or as competitive if Caitlin was not in the picture. It's very similar to the story of Gracie Gold and Ashley, Ashley Wagner Ashley pushing one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um and I think Gabby is now looking for that moment to like capture it on her own, you know, like yeah. do everything on her own merit. Yeah, and she's been working really hard. Over that's right. Because Gabby Daleman, you have to remember, um, I'm her Wikipedia page over here. <laughs> she has a four continents silver medal and a Ooh. world's bronze medal and an Olympic team gold. Who needs a Grand Prix medal? But I'm not going to lie, she probably wants one, and she probably wants to qualify for the Grand Prix final, because it'll be in Vancouver. Uh, so, she just recently posted some Instagram videos of her trying out new combinations, and they look good! Let's tow. Toto, we all know she could do the Toto. Uh, Sal Cow, triple Sal Cow, triple toe, and then she uh, double axle, triple toe again. So, girlfriend is not coming to play next season yeah i hope she attempts that triple x triple toe because it looked really good on that instagram video mm -hmm. and that's probably going to be that key jump that's right <laughs> so i'd say definitely keep the triple toe triple toe in the short program oh thank you someone just walked in <laughs> the triple toe triple toe for the short but maybe she at least needs two in the long program so maybe keep the toe toe because that's her money jump and then let's toe you know to get the points well, she wouldn't be able to do that last toe because <gasps> she can't repeat the tr triple toe three times. So it would probably have to be which one ever becomes okay. more. Let's toe, then sal cow toe. Mm -hmm. That you can do, yeah. 
Yeah. Wait. But you can only repeat the toe once, right? Like, or is that like the quad j- jump? I don't even know. There's so many rule changes that are being made that I feel like I would not <laughs> analyze it. Maybe Nicole would be able to be the best one for that. So That is right. Hey, maybe we make a video later on talking about just rule changes. That's a good idea because I think that um, it's important to make um, people aware of these rule changes because... It will definitely impact the scoring going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, no longer are we going to probably see like big humongous numbers. So, or backloading. Or oh, thank God for backloading is going to be right. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was giving <laughs> Zagidova does a jump in the first thirty seconds. Woo! <laughs> I'm excited for that. You know, it'll be interesting to see which jump she actually ends up attempting. But I have a feeling it's probably going to be double axle or something something that's very easy and then like she'll still backload like the most difficult content last jump will be the let's loop (laughs) there you go hopefully she doesn't fall on it like she did but but that will be tough to do that combination at the end of your show program you gotta admit it's easiest done as the first in my opinion and i'm not a professional athlete so but if someone can do it it's probably zagidova she seems to have like a mental strength um and also like Physically, like she can probably do that better than anybody else. Yeah. Although we don't know how she'll be next season. Her, yeah. The, the season girl was kept... kind of emotional. <laughs> the... But she probably, I, I don't know. I feel like she probably will do really well. Um, I'm intrigued to see how Evgenia does as well um, now that she's training with Orser. Um, but that's in a different video. This is all about Caitlin. Yeah, okay, me. yeah. And Yay, that- Caitlin. Um, anyone who made it this far in the video, comment down below if you can think of a topic for us or me with somebody else to discuss in another video because I still want to keep these discussions going because I still think about figure skating and it drives me nuts that it's not even like really summer yet, at least here in Seattle. So in order to keep... Um, figure skating fresh in my mind i'd like to make videos and discuss little things here and there yeah it feels like some are here in california but that's a different story. <laughs> lucky okay so i think this is a good place to end kanishka thank you again for coming on to my video and thank you everyone for watching i'll see you in the next one goodbye